Now you've gone and decided to venture down the rabbit hole that is modding space engineers. And you've been using Blender for a while now, and you need to get something that the game can work with. Well, do I have a surprise for you? There's this handy plugin by Harag that makes the whole process a whole lot easier. Not only does it make taking your model and putting it in the game easier, it also makes LODs, construction models, mirroring, collision, mount points, and some other fiddly bits a whole lot easier. Before we get into downloading everything, I highly suggest you check out the project folder setup video. This will give you an area that allows you to nicely sort things and make sure exporting models works right. Often, people do come to me with a problem, and it's the result of a haphazard setup that would have been avoided with a clean project folder. There's a link in the description below to that video. The plugin is now being updated by a couple of community members, Cam and Newtgard. It's likely the way to download this plugin will change. For now, to download it, it is via Newtgard's GitHub page. A link will be provided in the description below. Once we're on the page, we can see the plugin and some files that we can download. Here you can see that we have some source code zip files, and then we have a space engineers fixed scaling and material ref zip. For now, what we're going to do is just go ahead and download this zip file right here. Once you click on it, it should start downloading. It might come up with a prompt asking you to download it. Once it's finished, go ahead and open Blender. Once in Blender, you want to go to the File, User Preferences, Add-ons, go ahead and maximize this, install add-on from file, and then go to where you actually downloaded the file to. For me, it will be in my storage drive and downloads. Here you can see the downloaded file, Space Engineers Fixed Scaling and Materials Ref.zip. We don't actually need to decompress it, so we're just going to go ahead and double click on it. Now on this left side categories area, you can now see that Space Engineers has been added. Go ahead and click on that, and then the center area will change to reflect that there's only one Space Engineers option here. Click on the little checkbox, and that will enable the plugin. Click this little arrow to drop down and provide all the options that we need to configure. Now we're going to go ahead and fill out these lines. The first one we're going to fill out is the game directory. To do that, you just go over to the right, click this folder, and then you go to where the game is installed. For me, it's on local disk C, and then you go into games, Steam, Steam apps, common, space engineers, and then you click accept. And then it'll fill out those two lines. Now, the rest of these we actually need to download. And we're going to download a new MWM Builder because the one that comes in the mod SDK and the game doesn't actually work for what we need. So to start, in the description below there's going to be a set of links. We're going to start by downloading the MWM Builder. That is a Google Drive link. It's going to take you to a page like this. Click download and it should download it for you automatically. Or it'll take you to another page and ask your permission to download and stuff like that. Additionally, we're going to download the Space Engineers mod SDK. Once you're on this page, just go to the top right, this green button right here that says free. Click to install that and it'll install automatically to Steam. After that is the FBX importer. This is another Google Drive link, same thing. Click download and it'll download. Our last choice is Havoc. This is a Intel program now and it's no longer publicly supported or downloadable directly through Intel. So we have to keep a community version floating around. You need to choose between the 32 and the 64 bit. Once all those downloads are done, just go to your downloads folder and you'll see your files here. Just go ahead and double click on Havoc. Now if you're installing Havoc content tools, you might actually need to install the Net Framework 3.5 Service Pack 1. I don't have it installed right now, so what I need to do is click OK. It'll take me directly to the Microsoft.com website and then I just go ahead and click download. I don't want to install Visual Studio or the .NET Core SDK, and I don't need the latest version of the .NET framework. What I actually need is that specific version I was talking about. So scroll down, and what we need is .NET Framework 3.5 Service Pack 1. Go ahead and click on Runtime. It'll take you to this page, and then it should eventually pop up with this window here for you to save the file. Once that's all done downloaded, go to your Downloads folder, and we want to go ahead and install that .NET FX35. Once it's done initially extracting the files, you want to go ahead and click download and install this feature. Once it's done installing, we can go ahead and proceed with installing Havoc. Go ahead and close. 
And before we go ahead and install everything, let's make sure our projects folder is set up to actually receive all the programs. I'm going to go to my projects folder, and then I'm going to go ahead into that Blender plugins folder that I had us create in the tutorial video I created previously. Inside here, I need you to create two folders. The first folder is going to be Havoc. The second folder is going to be Havoc FBX Importer and that's set up. Go back to your downloads folder and we'll go ahead and start installing things. We're going to start with Havoc, so go ahead and double click on that and then go ahead and click on next. I agree and we don't need to install any of the additional plugins so go ahead and leave all those unchecked. Click next and then we need to set it to install where we want it to. So I'm going to browse and then go to my PC, my storage drive, projects folder, Blender plugins, Havoc, click OK and then go ahead and click on next. It's going to ask you to install DirectX. You, you want to do that so it actually works. Click I accept, click next, and then it's done. It might actually ask you to download some additional options. Just make sure you click next and it should download those. And then you should get to this installation complete screen. Click finish and then Havoc should finish as well. Click next and then click finish. Then we want to install the FBX importer. So go ahead to that. I'm going to right click, extract to Havoc FBX importer, go into that folder and again, and then we should have a single file. I'm going to go ahead and control X to cut, go to my projects folder, under plugins, FBX import and paste it in there. I'm going to go to downloads again and I need to do the same for the MWM builder. So right click that, extract here and then go ahead and go in that folder, go into the MWM. And we want it to copy this, but we'll keep it in this folder. I'm going to control X again, projects, Blender plugins, and paste that in there. Now that we're done here, go back to Blender, and we could go ahead and assign the rest of the items. MWM Builder, open that up, and then we want to go to projects folder, Blender plugins, MWM Builder, and then we want to click on the EXE. Next, we want to install the material reference XML. Click the folder icon. I'm going to go to my common folder, Space Engineers Mod SDK, and then we want to go into Original Content, Materials, and then click on Materials XML, click Accept, and then the FBX importer, click Projects, Plugins, Importer, click on that, and then the standalone filter manager there. Click on projects, plugins, Havoc, Havoc content tools, and then the standalone filter manager. And then there we go. We have our plugins set up all the way. Make sure you go ahead and click on save user settings a few times, and then go ahead and close the user preferences window. From here, we want to make sure the plugin is actually enabled. So on this right side, we want to go into the scene tab, click on there, and then we want to go ahead and collapse most of these. Turn off gravity, just keep closing, and then here we see the Space Engineers block. I'm going to drag it all the way up to the top by clicking on the series of dots here and click the checkbox. From here, we can expand this a little bit so we can see things a little bit better. And here we can see that there's like large block and scale down. So this will give us a large block and a small block. And then you have a couple of other options, large block only, small block only. If you click small block only, it will not scale down. So you need to make sure it's the proper size. Then we have use custom grid subtypes. If you click on that, you could set the large grid subtype ID and the small grid subtype ID. If you need it to be something specific that doesn't automatically get exported the way you want it to. This is mostly good for legacy support, but there's in most cases, you don't ever really need to worry about it except for your own preference. I don't really use it that much anymore, so you probably don't need to use it much for anything that you do. So I'm just going to go ahead and uncheck that. If I remember right, this block specular is for DX9, so you don't actually need to do anything with these. And we're getting to the point where you don't really have the ability to support DX9 anymore which is very old. There is a DX9 version of Space Engineers available, but it's very, very old. It's, I think, like two, three years old now. So just go ahead and ignore that. This mirroring block is actually so you can do mirroring for blocks that are oddly shaped. You don't 
want to do it for everything, but for some things you can actually make a mirroring block for it. You'll end up with two MWMs that you put one of them in here. Export subpath. This is very important. Notice how it goes slash slash models. That means that it's going to a relative path file relative to where our blend file is. And then here we can see export settings and it's red. All you have to do is go over to this right side and click on the plus. There's one last thing I suggest doing and that's coming over to the left side to this create tab. Once clicking that, minimize the add primitive selection. And then you have this space engineers tab here and click set up grid. And it'll change the grid to be how it is you want. If you want to change this at any time, you can, and the button will come back. So you press N, and then you can change the grid floor settings. If I scale it up or down, you can see the setup grid comes back up. So go ahead and set it to the normal. I usually set this to about four, so that would be about two blocks big. And that is the size of one normal large ship block. So it's two and a half meters by two and a half meters by two and a half meters tall. And each of these individual squares represent 1.25 meters. And once you're done configuring the grid how you want, we're pretty much done for the basic setup. We got our plugin enabled, we got all the pieces installed, and we got our grid configured. Go ahead to File and click Save Startup File and click it one more time and that saves it and then you can go ahead and close blender and always load back up to that setting how you had it well that took a little bit longer but now we're set up to mod space engineers you should be pretty much good to go from here just be sure to keep an eye out for any new videos that may pop up if there's any particular one you need you could leave a suggestion or become a patron on patreon and support the channel and get the one you need as soon as possible when you make the suggestion as i'm more likely to create the videos patrons need than just the suggestions that are floating around. As always, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, feel free to send me a message and I'll usually get back to you fairly quick. If you like these tutorial videos and like to see them, or would like to see some other types of videos more regularly, be sure to check out my Patreon. As a thanks for helping me out, I try to keep my patrons updated about what's going on and try to provide support to any that need it. That's all for now. Take care.